Hey there everybody, welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we are doing part 5 of the Procedural River Generator series, and I think uh, maybe the next move is to add in some rocks. So again, if you haven't seen any of the other parts, I'd recommend watching them. Uh, but check out these rocks that I made. Uh, they're completely procedural, randomly scattered, and you're going to notice that the foam kind of reacts to where the rocks are. So if I play this, uh, you can see it kind of looks pretty realistic, especially if you put it through a nice camera and all this. Um, that's what we're doing this time. Uh, where we left off, though, is we just made a nice uh, curve thing that makes a river, and there's foam on the edges was the last thing we did. So now uh, I want to add in rocks. And, you know, you could make a bunch of rocks and scatter them. I'm going to use a different technique. So, let's do that. Uh, I'm going to close this over here. Uh, we want to make rocks, and we want them to be procedurally scattered. To do that, we need to do a couple things. One, we need to scatter our points, right? So we say, make a bunch of points, and then for each point, generate a rock. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I don't want to uh, scatter based on this mesh because it's evolving. It's evolving over time. I want it to be consistent. So the rocks are stationary. They're not going up and down with the waves. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this subdivided mesh to be our generator. Okay. So let's use a distribute points on faces using the subdivided mesh. Again, I'm not using the altered one. Right. Uh, but we're going to use distribute points on faces. I'm going to use Poisson Disk. What this means is it's going to generate points, but it's not going to have any two points be within, let's say, 0.1 meters of each other. So they're not going to overlap. So we don't have intersecting rocks. And I'm going to bring up the density. Uh, for each of these, I want to instance on points. So for each of these points, I want to generate an instance saying, uh, use a sphere. And I know uh, that's not a rock, but we will get to it. So. Let's make these spheres a bit smaller so that they're actually sized to our thing. Perfect. And then we're going to join it with our river. So you can see we have a loose uh, rock system. Uh, let's modify it a bit. I want the distance to be a bit bigger, 0.2, so that they're not intersecting. Um, maybe let's also, what else should we do? Should we increase the number of rocks? Something like this is pretty good. Um, and we want to do as much as we can to these, these spheres to make them look like rocks. So first of all, let's randomize the scale so that they're not all the same. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a random value between 0 and 1, so it's uniform on x, y, and z for scale. I'm going to randomize these. At minimum, it can be 25% scale, and at maximum, it could be, or let's say at minimum, it could be like 0.4, or at maximum, it could be like 0.8. And uh, this is telling me now that I want more rocks now that they're smaller. So I'm going to bring up the density, something like that. Next, to make these look like rocks uh, instead of spheres, what we can do is we can distort these until they kind of look jagged and all this. So here's how I'm going to do that. We have a bunch of spheres instanced. I want them to be converted into real geometry. So they're not just instances now, but they're real geometry. And... For each of these, I want to manipulate the position, so we always use the set position node, and I'm going to offset it by some randomness, a noise texture. You're going to see it's going to bring everything up to the corner and all this. Uh, this is because, on average, noise texture adds a number between 0 and 1, which on average is 0.5. Uh, we need to subtract uh, 0.5 to uh, even this out. So now these are centered. By the way, we should be using color, not factor, so it's different on X, Y, and Z. So you can see now these things are centered, but it's a bit too intense. So I'm going to scale this effect by some amount. So you can see we start off with spheres that we distort until they kind of look like rocks. Okay. To make these look more like rocks, there's a couple things we can do. Uh, one, we can play with the detail. As we bring up the detail, it's going to add more kind of sharp uh, things going on with our rocks. Um, another thing we can do is mess with the scale. So you want to ask yourself how jagged should these be, and maybe a bit of roughness. And those kind of look like rocks. We can, we can play around with it a bit more. Uh, but let's set shade smooth. Now they're smooth rocks. And let's play a bit with the distress. So I feel like these are a bit too big, some of them. So let's have them be a maximum of 70%. 
And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. By the way, the more resolution we add to these, uh, the more the noise can affect it. Uh, let's do a bit more randomization. I'm going to randomize the rotation. So I'm going to use a random value. Whoops. And this will, oh, I guess random rotation doesn't really matter if we're going to then distort it. So I guess if you wanted to do a random rotation, uh, you could do a random per island here. You know what? I'm going to skip that step since it seems a bit more complicated than I'd want it to be. Um, okay, this is a bit too intense. I'm happy with that. So we have rocks. Uh, let's see what this looks like in rendered mode. Yeah, it looks much nicer, doesn't it? And you can see the rocks are stationary, so the water goes up and down and all around. Maybe we could have rocks be a bit smaller, so I'm just paying, playing with the look. Um, and we can have a higher density. And remember, uh, we just changed the seed value and we get a different distribution of rocks. Um, but now, let me make the material for these, and then we will do the uh, foam that reacts to this in the uh, next part. So for the material, uh, what I want to do is I want to set a material. This is going to be separate than the river. So we have the river material, the water material, and now we are going to have the rock material. So right now I'm having this use the water material as well, which does some weird, weird things, uh, but we're going to make its own. So we're going to make a new material. We're going to call this rock. We can call the previous one water. So now both of these are using water. I'm going to swap this to rock. So you can see, again, original things using water. This one's using rock. And for the rock material, let's make it look like a rock so we can get rid of all this. Uh, starting off, I'm just going to use a principled BSDF. So we just have these white rocks, and you can see this thing is now uh, responsive to the color. Um, a rock is basically a, a mix of color that looks random and normalized, as in there's bump and all this. Um, and we can also do something where the rock is wet on the bottom where it touches. Uh, we can do all of these things. So let's start off with uh, coloring the rocks. So I'm going to use a mix RGB to pick two colors, and what's going to drive the factor is going to be a noise texture. So I'm going to use a noise texture, bring up the scale, and make it high contrast. So I'm using this color ramp so we can actually see what's going on here. So you can see we, here we have our noise. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to add in detail. That's a major thing. If you don't add in detail, it's not going to look like a rock, right? Add in that detail. Add in that roughness, and you can already see it's kind of looking very rocky, in a sense. And we are going to use this as the factor to pick two colors. So one of them could be like a dark reddish kind of thing going on, and the other one can be a much lighter, also reddish thing going on. And we can play with these colors. Put this in the base color. Okay, already that kind of looks like rocks. Again, when you put it through the principle of BSDF, it's going to look a lot better. Um, I think a major thing that's going to make this look better and not like clay is we send this through a bump. So we're taking our noise mask and turning it into normal information. Put that in there. And now we actually have like fake detail, as you can see. And I think that's pretty big. Um, if anything, let's bring this down. Just so we have a bit more of a gradual fall off. Okay, these look like rocks. If anything, this is a bit intense. Bring that down by 25%. And I think lastly, what could really sell this, as I said, is having the roughness be low where there's water. And otherwise, we could have it be high, so it's not super reflective. How do we know where this is intersecting the rock? Good question. Uh, well, we have a node exactly for this, ambient occlusion. This is going to tell us uh, where there is a lot of ambient occlusion. In other words, where is it going to be intersecting our river? And you can't see it yet, but when we bring up the contrast, you can see it's uh, not only is it uh, showing where uh, it's touching the uh, river, but it's also going to add in like pockets of high concavity uh, where water could have been trapped. And let's see, do we want to change any of this? No, we do not. Okay. So we're going to do something like that. By the way, you can use the normals to drive the wetness map a bit more as well. Why not? Um, we're going to use this, and we're going to say 
Uh, where it is black, have low roughness, perfect, and where it's white, have high roughness. Beautiful. Connect that, view it, and now you can kind of tell that this rock is very like rough, diffuse, but it's very shiny on the bottom. To really emphasize this, I can mix in the color black. So I'm going to multiply the color black and say, uh, show this color. So, you know, we can make our rocks lighter, black, and all this. But uh, use this ambient occlusion as the factor. So what this should do is darken. No, we want to reverse this, actually. There we go. Uh, so now um, it's going to be multiplying the most where there's ambient occlusion. And you can see here's the before and the after. And that's just going to make them look nice and dark and slippery and like they were actually wet. So I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, what else could we add to this? Um, there, there aren't any other properties of the material that I think matter, like IOR, transmission, and all of this. Um, if anything, it's really about adding foam that reacts uh, to the river, I believe. But I'm trying to think if there's anything I'd like to add in here. Um, I think these rocks look pretty dang realistic. Again, the normal might be a bit intense, so I'm going to bring that down. And I'm just trying to think before I end this one if there's anything I want to do before I add in foam. Uh, I just want to mention as well, this is all, of course, procedural. You know, it generates new rocks as we extend it. And as always, I like to do my circle test because it just looks so cool. Yeah, that looks fucking dope. Okay. Um, anything else I want to do with this? Uh, we could chop off the rocks on the bottom, but ideally you're putting this on terrain so you wouldn't see it anyways. Uh, let me scale this down to zero. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I want to include here. I feel like I'm just like buying time or something like this. I think that's it. Okay, so uh, we made rocks. Uh, in the next part, unless I'm forgetting something, we are going to add in uh, foam. So let's do that.